everyone. Welcome back to the How to Podcast series. I'm excited to have a, another amazing co-host on the show to talk all things podcasting and to talk about a little bit of AI. Ooh, we'd have to take a drink. Every time we say AI, you have to take a drink. Uh, and I'm excited to pass here. I'm going to talk about all the great things happening for her. She helps a lot of people in podcasting. She's a super smart person in podcasting, and I'm excited to have her here. Pat, welcome to the How to Podcast series. Thank you so much. I don't always consider myself a smart person with podcasting because I'm relatively new to the to the game, to the show. But uh, yeah, I've, I I love a learning curve, so I dug in. <laughs> There you go. Somebody said you're not. It's not bragging if you've done it. So you've done it. So go. good job. Good, awesome. Tell uh, Pat. Tell everybody like a little bit about you, kind of who you work with uh, in your day to day with podcasters. Interested to start off there. Yeah, great. Well, I've been um, podcasting, uh, probably podcasting in general for about four or five, five years. I started out not knowing anything. And we just jumped into a co-hosting a show on homeschooling. I'm, I'm a home educator of 27 years, retired. Wow. And uh, so we did a, a show for about two years on that. And I just kind of learned what to do, you know, trial and error. Uh, and then um, realized uh, at, at, at one point after that, I realized that I was facing a divorce and I was going to need to find a way to support myself and a friend of mine who's also a business coach said, well, why, why don't you do that? Like, you've been doing it already for, for t- two years for yourself. Like, do it for other people. And, you know, it's kind of one of those duh moments <laughs> that I hadn't thought of. So, yeah, so that's what I did. I jumped in. I had uh, a, another friend who um, is a or was a podcast coach. And she helped people get started, help people, you know, launch shows, move forward with them and stuff. And um, but she had young kids at home and she has since left the business to focus on her kids. But uh, at the time she was going, going big guns and she would run these workshops, teach people how to get started. And then the business owners, she would refer to me, people who had, you know, money in a marketing budget kind of thing and say, Oh, you need to work with patch. We'll make it so easy for you. You know, blah, blah, blah. So that was, that's how I got started. No advertising, no, you know, Hmm. nothing like that. It was just word of mouth. And since then um, I've moved to Atlanta and I've started joining some uh, networking groups. And so now I'm, you know, more and more in a more and more in a network that, uh, you know, it gives me leads, and I love to help people with their show. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Tell them some of the podcasts you've been working on. I'm on your website as we chat. There's a lot of great uh, images there for some of the shows you've worked with. Yeah. Um, w- tell us, like, some highlights, some of the shows that you've been working a part of. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I have two clients right now that are in the actual health and wellness field, but they're very different audience. And that's, that's what I love. Uh, you know, people say, well, you know, I'm in – Excellent, you know, fill in the fill in the blank industry. There's a ton of podcasts out there. You know, what can I say? What can I offer? And these two, two of my clients are a perf- perfect example of just putting their own spin on mental health. They have separate audiences, uh, and just you know, they appeal to to different people. And um, I just I love working with both of them. I mean, it, it's it's just amazing how their shows are similar, even though they are in both coaching and mental health is it's it's fascinating uh but i do love like oh gosh i've done capsule podcasts which are short series and they're known by a lot of other names too i call them capsule podcasts um Mm -hmm. and i had a a a bible study teacher one time who wanted to start a speaking career you know speaking at churches and for groups and stuff like that and we did a capsule podcast of her she did a, a series of teaching that she already had been doing, you know, locally and in her own church and put that on her website and that she leads people to that. So they hear her style, you know, how she presents, how she talks, what she talks about, and they really get to hear her and and get to know her. So that was kind of exciting that she used it for that. I hadn't thought of that as a concept before. Um, And I love doing those capsule podcasts because I think actually one of my clients right now started out she's like I don't know if I want to do a podcast it's a lot of work and blah 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 you know and I'm busy and she is she's got a crazy 
private practice. And uh, but she does a lot of lives. So she had a did a whole, whole series on uh, in November one year on gratitude. Gratitudes with a twist. Really different spin on being thankful and grateful and all that stuff. And I said, well, we, we could use them as a as a capsule. So I think it turned out to be like um, thirteen, a series of thirteen, and she just got hooked. Like we set it out there, we you know, put it out there as a capsule. She's like, what would it look like to keep doing this with you? Like it got her hooked on podcasting. And that was so gratifying, Mm -hmm. you know, that she saw a a difference in her business and in just helping people, getting her mission, her her message out there, um, that now she does it full time. And I love it. So the whole idea of doing a short run show like that, I don't think a lot of people talk about that enough. Like people that I talk to, they think, well, I'd love to start a show, but I don't want to commit to something for a long period of time. Like, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Like, is there an end in sight to this? (laughs) I love these short run shows because it just lives on. I just, before we hit record, I click play on your episodes from a few years ago. It's still sitting there. It's people can find it, fall in love with you. It's a lead generator. Like, it's just... Absolutely. It just opens doors, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, I did a presentation the other day. Um, someone had asked me one time, well, why don't I, I just want to blog. I'll just blog, you know, because everybody knows blogs. They've been out there forever, whatever. But I did it. I, I dug in and the numbers on blogs, there's like 600 million active blogs out there. I mean, we're talking worldwide, but podcasting can be worldwide too. So let's compare, right? Um, and then, but, but when you... And there's, I think, two and a half million active, no, there's two and a half million podcasts out there. And only like 750,000 of them are active, which means that they've had an episode in the last 90 days. So you start, you know, funneling that down. Uh, I mean, if you've done 50 episodes, you're like in the, what, top 1% of podcasters, just in terms of. And uh, yeah, you don't have to. Like people are listening. They want to hear this. They're, you know, in the gym. They're going for walks. They're they're doing the laundry. They're listening. It's it, it's something that, what is it called? Like non-interruptive. It's a non-interruptive form of marketing. Yeah. Because they don't yeah. have to stop and like look at the camera, you know, to see YouTube, to watch the video, or they don't have to, um, you know, it, have, be bothered by a commercial in the middle of the show. This is what they're listening to, you know. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a companion for listeners. Um, while they're doing something else, they have you on, they're walking their dog, they're washing the dishes, they're cooking, they're playing with the kids, whatever. It's just this companion thing that comes with you. And then, yeah, you don't have to devote all your attention to it. I've actually talked to um, uh, a group that has a, a kids podcast app called Kids, kids Pod. And they love the idea that there's no screens. For podcasts, so the kids are not attached and focus on a screen. They can be playing with toys and listening to a kids focused podcast with no commercials. Oh, and it's all kid friendly. I love. I'm that. like that's so cool, right? So, um, yeah. So the, I like I like the non screen part of podcasting. There's obviously advantages to doing video as well, but I do like the idea that audio is so portable mm-hmm. and can be listened to anywhere. That's great. Yeah, definitely. So a new podcaster to be comes to you and says, "Pat, I'm ready to start my show, but I don't know. I don't know about my content. I don't know where I'm going to land. Like, how how am I going to plan out this podcast? Whether it's short run or more long term. Some tips from your perspective on content creation. I know that's something you're really passionate about, but I'd like to talk about that because we don't talk about that often enough here on the yeah. podcast." Yeah. Do you have some thoughts around content creation, maybe for a new podcaster? I, I do. Um, and actually, you know, I started out as solely as a podcast editor. I would just, you know, edit the the audio. And I realized that I had, that was a huge question that clients had, no matter how long they've been in business, if they were newbies or whatever. Uh, it was always, what do I talk about? You know, what, what's, the ne- what's the next thing that we cover now? And I realized I was doing a lot of coaching. And so that's why I kind of broadened, you know, into podcast producing. And I offer that. That's just a given when I work with people now. But um, the first thing I'd say is if you're starting, want to start a podcast, first look at the content you already have. 
uh, a lot of people, uh, especially if, if you're in a business, if you're like a coaching business or whatever, have you written any articles? Have you blogged? Do you do posts even on like Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram? Like there's, that's a treasure trove of stuff you've already talked about. You already know. And this is probably, you know, I, I, it, this was news to me, which was heartbreaking, but people aren't, even your your most loyal fans aren't necessarily sitting back with bated breath with when is the next thing that you're going to, you know, put out there. Like people aren't, aren't really attached at the hip with you. So that gives yeah. you the freedom to repurpose what you've already talked about. I mean, it's a wonderful, right. it's actually a wonderful thing. So first of all, look back at all the things you've already done. And, and whether they're written or or video or uh, audio, just just kind of brainstorm with it. Uh, and then and then second of all, once you've got that list, then start start um, start looking in, at how you can dig in to them. So you might be one of the maybe a blog post you wrote was five ways to da 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 eat healthier. Okay, uh, is there one of those ways that you can like do a deep dive? And that could be another episode. Like all of all of the topics you've done, there could be sub episodes from that, and you could have mini series on them. Which which automatically, you know, when you when you do a mini series, you're you're inc- encouraging people to come back. They want to they want to you know see the re- hear listen to the rest of the series. So that's that's kind of will be attractive to them. Uh, and, and I would take you know take some time on that. However, don't feel like you have to. Uh, have to like map out like a year's worth of content or whatever, because you'll find like, I I usually tell people when they first start to make sure you have three, four, maybe five episodes that you can release once to encourage people to binge. And then, um, you know, even if you have like two months, if you, if you publish weekly, some people publish when they first start biweekly, which just helps them keep the pressure down, you know, personal pressure production. Um, you know, but have a couple of months there and, and people will, you know, make comments, they'll respond, they'll reply it, it, as you promote the episodes and that will give you more content too. You know, there's, you'll start realizing it's like, oh my gosh, so much to talk about. Like, <laughs> too much to talk about. Uh, and it's fun, you know, to, when you see yourself too, and all the things you've already written or done or know, you know, that you know about it's kind of empowering. Like, wow, I, I can do this. I can, I can share this message. You know, I do have a message to share. Yeah. And then leveraging a calendar is always helpful. And if your podcast lends itself to the calendar themes, so like, for again, I have Dad Space podcast. So I'm looking in the calendar, I'm looking at Father's Day, Grandparents Day, maybe Veterans Day, Remembrance Day. Um, there's the beginning of the year. We have New Year's, New Year's. Mm-hmm. Those are all, I could do health related things. November is Movember for men. Yep. So if I can do some kind of thematic thing through the calendar, that fills up a lot of time on my calendar. Then I'm just filling in the blanks where mm-hmm. I don't have a theme for that month. One thing I suggested to people who do interview shows, they're like, I can't, I can't do an interview show every week. I'm like, okay, well, what if you did one every second week and on the off weeks in between your interviews, you do a recap of the interview you did last week and make it like five minutes, just short, your thoughts on what happened in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And I would record it right after you're done recording your episode with your guest. Yeah, everything's Your guest leaves, everything, yeah, it's all fresh in your mind. Your guest leaves the recording. You're still set up. Just do a five-minute episode and then release it on that off week in between your interviews. It's a great it idea. Sen- it sends your audience back into your calendar, back sorry, back into your catalog, right? Back into past episodes, and so you're you're inviting them to go back and listen to that full episode. Yeah, and, you're and just that's, giving your thoughts, right? And honestly, too, when you do, uh, whether it's an interview or a solo thing, if you can connect it to like past episodes that you've done, it's great to leave those links in that show notes because. Yeah. You know, people might be wanting to listen to a certain theme or something, you know, connected with that. And that will give them practical, you know, practical way to go ahead and, and uh, find that show that's relevant. Yeah. So if you're, th- if you're looking at it, the calendar going, wow, 52 weeks in a year, I'm going to do 52 interviews. I don't know if I can commit to that. Well, cut that in half. And then, like I said, just do the interview and then do a recap. 
if you want to do weekly, that's one option. That's an option. And that you give gives you that week off in between, which gives you more time to prepare or right. research or find more guests. So that's one option if you have a guest-driven podcast, right? Yeah, I, I don't usually encourage people. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, too. I, when, if, if someone's mm-hmm. just starting, I don't usually yeah. encourage people to go right into the guest guest having guests because um, – there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a learning curve for you, first of all. Uh, but second of all, you want your uh, your listeners to know that, like, to fall in love with you. Do, do you know, right. like, you're the you're the person I listen to for mental health advice. You're the person I listen to for good eating, you know, or uh, tips or whatever. And then when you br- gradually bring guests on, um, you become known as a resource. You know, so, oh yeah, I bet I'll bet. You know, I bet Pat knows somebody who can do da da da. And uh, rather than you know giving all your all your stuff away, well, I don't really know anything, but this this professional does. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So I, I just and plus it's a lot of work, as you know, right? To keep keep the guests. Probably once you get going, people come to you, but it is a lot of uh, management time to to handle guests. And uh, if you're just getting started, it that's an easy way to like overwhelm yourself and then burn out. And you don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, I think some of my other shows, when I first started, I had no guests. And it's a, it was a guest. That my idea was it would be a guest-driven interview podcast. Trying to find your first few guests for a brand new show. You're knocking on doors, sending emails. People are like, who are you? What? How many listeners do you have? I have none. I just started last week. You know, it's like, oh. So that's always interesting. Any tips on finding a guest for a brand new show? Anything you'd suggest to somebody? Well, there are, um, it's interesting, there are services that cost tons of money. Yep. That, I mean, I would I would say, first of all, just be wary. Do your, do your due diligence because, you know, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but there, there are some people who do this as a business, find a, but they charge tons of money. But there's a new service. Well, it's relatively new. They've got a couple thousand uh, shows on it already uh, called Podmatch. Uh, yeah, Alex, that's how we met. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, with Alex and Fil- Filippo. Filippo I, yeah. yeah. San Filippo. Yeah. He was actually on my show just a little while ago. Yes, I know. Great guy. He is awesome. He's like authentic. He's kind. He's, he's really, um, he's interested in your success. Yeah. You know, and He's got a great service. I love Podmatch. Yeah, that's that's exactly that's how we met. And I actually do that for clients because they, you know, they they come to me and we're doing a show and they're like, well, I think I want to guest, but who do I ask? You know, I can oh, I can ask my my aunt Marge. She's got a great recipe. And I'm like, but that has nothing to do with what you're doing. Like you, you really want your guests to match up with your yeah. your audience. You know, what will serve them? So yeah. What about um, audience engagement, Pat? If somebody was coming to you as a podcaster, like, I'm not hearing from my audience. Like, any tips that you'd give me as an as a podcaster to encourage my audience to reach out? Because we only hear like a small percentage would ever reach out. But it's, how do we how do we build that? Well, it's true. I mean, there is. It doesn't mean they're not engaged just because they're not reaching out. But I know that reaching out is a metric. You know something that is measurable but i would say you know ask questions leave questions in your show notes um not a lot like like focus on one question per episode kind of thing because you know when people are faced with too many uh just too many choices they shut down so and and that would be the same thing with the call to action like for eight weeks you know use this uh maybe do speak pipe i love speak pipe yeah, and you mentioned me that you use it too. Yeah, yeah. Because in SpeakPipe, for those who don't know about it, you can leave a message, like a like a voicemail, and then the the host of the show can actually use that recording on on the episode, yeah. which just gives you know makes a different sound and just makes a unique uh, thing on your uh, show. And uh, and you know, ask a question, say, hey, hit my SpeakPipe link and let me know. Da 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 da. And it's a long, it, but remember it, that it's a long game. It, like, don't get discouraged if people don't reach out right away or or for a while. Just stay open, stay approachable, stay friendly. Don't show your frustration <laughs> if you're getting frustrated. <laughs> Why is nobody sending me a message? <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't nobody, do that. nobody wants yeah. to deal with desperation. The desperation. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> so. 
Why does nobody love me? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. That kind of thing. Come on. I'm a nice person. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like that. Um, the one thing we were going to talk about today that I would love to chat about as well with you is the whole thing around AI in podcasting. It's like, again, take another drink. It's something that's very popular. Everybody's talking about it. There's a lot of people nervous about it because they don't know. I'm not techie, so I'm afraid of AI. So I'm not even going to go there. But I think you might be missing an opportunity to to help you. I know recently I was working on an episode and I had I had four main points to my what I wanted to talk about, but I was I'm like, I wonder what I'm missing in in this big thought. So I put it into one of those AI tools and it came back with a fifth thing that I wasn't even thinking about. And I'm like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. I would have missed that. I don't know what I don't know. Right. Right. So using a tool like that can help you to kind of expand maybe your content a little bit and make you think about something. Mm -hmm. I did take it. I, I put it into my words and I shared my story around that fifth point, but I would have missed that point altogether had I not used something to research. It's, it's a library, basically, is how I kind of look at it. Um, talk a little bit about the AI stuff that you're in love with right now. What are you using? Yeah. First of all, it's, I, I am a recovering SOS survivors, shining objects, shining object syndrome. So <laughs> yeah. AI is all over the place and people, there's new permutations and tools and blah, blah, blah. So it's easy to get, once you do, you know, step through the door, it's easy to just be overwhelmed and, and there's a lot of stuff. I simply use Chad GPT. I just, I pay for the 4.0 and the prompt is what's important. You know, so like, and, and what I like about AI now, now, first of all, I just want to start out with saying, don't ever just copy paste, which I think just bears repeating. I just, we need to be reminded of that. You know, even there's ways to to tailor chat GPT to your, uh, you know, phrases that you use and just make your voice and tone and stuff. But um, you still, it's not you, you still want to edit it. It's just easier to edit than start from scratch. That's what I like about AI. Yeah. But AI scrapes from what's currently out there. And what I like about that is it gives you, well, like you point out, you you found a fifth point that you hadn't even thought about. Um, yeah. And you, you do want to know what's out there, not to repeat it, but to know what people are looking for, what people are interested right. in, what people are searching, and so that your show's relevant. Um, right. So I think it's really important. But the prompt is what's important. You know, you be don't say, you know, give me five tips for whatever. Like, go into, you know, I am a podcast host of a show that deals with, uh, you know, middle-aged women who are looking for help in transitions in their lives. I need to, you know, I mean, really deep. Yeah dig deep into the prompt for really good information. And you can always tweak it after it gives you results, you know, say, Oh, okay. Now put that in a nicer tone or now add five more or, uh, you know, different things. You can always tweak after it gives you the, the, the results. So it's really, it's very helpful for research. I find. Yeah. And even including your ideal listener, what are the details about them? Yep. You know, this is, this is content for this type of person. Yeah. This is who they are. This is what they're looking for. Now frame the answer to speak to that person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, well, that, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, I've been using perplexity.ai is the one I've been playing with because okay. it gives you links to articles Ooh. where it actually pulls the information from. Ooh. So you can actually go to the article and then you can go deeper on the article where it, and it's all sourced. It's all and like not notified of for each quote and things it pulled from. Mm -hmm. But perplexity.ai is, is one that I have a journalist friend in here up in Canada and Toronto. And as a journalist, he has to sort his sites, his, his sites all where he gets his information from. Right. So um, all of his sources. So he uses it for that as a kind of a check and balance where in the uh, maybe the free plan of ChatGPT or the older versions, it wouldn't always give you the source material. Yeah. So you're kind of like, are you making this up or where'd you get that from? This actually gives you the actual links to everything it's pulling from. Well, that which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. Perplex let's see. That's a new tool that I just learned about. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. There you go. That's free. Um, I like it. But the one thing I've noticed, though, because you and I, um, when we talk to podcasters, we talk about search engine optimization. 
that's a really hot topic as well, as well as AI and that old SEO thing. You want to be found, right? And we, we usually default to Google to be found, but now we're using AI to be found. And when you search an AI search, you generally get like a single result. You don't get multiple results, like different websites to go to and like compared to Google, they'll give you a whole pages and pages of results. You get one result with AI. Yeah. So I'm like, how can we be found in a single source result? I'm like, that's really interesting. Also on perplexity, I did a search for something around podcasting. It gives you like a like similar to ChatGPT, it'll give you all the words, everything, like a result. But then you can also click and they have videos, oh. they have audio, they have like other pictures, they have all this other stuff. And in the result, m my podcast that I talked about that in the past showed up as a result in my perplexity search. <laughs> so it was pulling from my podcast. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, that's, that's fun. So, um, so it does pull from other resources, not just words. Too, which is a kind of a cool thing. So, well, and yeah, you know, I, I don't think some, I, I think some people don't realize that uh, Google search is powered by AI. I mean, we've been using right. AI, yeah. you know, right. forever. And I would really encourage people not to be afraid of it. Um, you know, like any tool, it can be used for harm or good. It, it, it's a tool, simply a tool, and um, I was I was watching it. it was interesting an interview. I don't remember who it was with, but he was some. The interviewer asked the guy, um, you know, some people are afraid or concerned that AI will take over and all our jobs. You know, journalism, especially this, the guy was concerned about, would be uh, a moot point. You know, we'll be all out of business. And the and the the um, the guest pointed out that even with AI, there still needs to be a you know, there's a human foundation for it. You know, AI didn't invent itself. Like, we invented it. Now, I know yeah. it's smart now, and it is able to teach itself and learn and things like that. But human beings, there's, ne you know, never going to be a replacement for a human. And there are, and the people who use AI, as opposed to just fear it and back off, will find a way to you know, to keep their job or tweak their job or make themselves useful uh, in using these new tools. Like, don't yeah. fear it. Just explore it. And I don't know. That's that's what I think about it. I, I, I'm not I'm not scared of it. I, I started out like, oh, I can't use that. You know, right. But um, but I've always had trouble. I mean, I'm an I'm a writer, and I've always had trouble with that blank screen. You know, starting from nothing, and yeah. AI just gives you something to start with. So look at it that yeah. way. It's just good for prompts, like those writing prompts, mm -hmm. podcasting prompts. Those are great. Yeah. Those are just again, you're like, oh, what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to head over there and type in what I'm talking about in general and see what it gives me. Yep. So that, and then also on Google, when you type in your search, let, let Google autofill mm -hmm. and give you suggestions that people, well, other people are searching this part. I love that too. Yeah. So you can really go down a wormhole just from doing that. So I know. That'll help you with your content creation for sure. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're hosting eight podcasts because you <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this at home. No, don't, <laughs> don't do this. Train no. professionals, um, don't. Yes, please, please, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah. I, I think AI is a great tool. You just have to know how to use it. You know how to use it properly. Knowing how to write a good prompt is probably one of the things you're going to have to work on. Mm -hmm. To But just play with it. You're not going to break anything. So go in there, play with it, see what you get for a result. I actually chat GPT'd myself. I don't know, it sounds weird to say out loud, but it actually came back with stuff about me and my wife because we do podcasting together. It also said that I live in a different part of Canada that I don't live in and that I had a herb garden, which I don't have a herb garden. <laughs> so I just responded to chat GPT and said, uh, this is good, this is good, but this is not correct. And chat GPT is like, oh, thanks, we'll update our files, thanks. Yeah. And I'm like, 
who am I talking to here? Like, <laughs> who is it behind the screen? Like, I feel like it's like a Wizard of Oz I was moment. just thinking like, that. Who's behind the curtain, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it actually gave me a result of myself, which I was like, wow. That's, that's interesting. interesting. I'm going to have to try that. That's, that's. Here you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, have you ever Googled yourself? I mean, that's probably similar to that, you know. That also sounds disturbing to say that. Yes, I have Googled myself as well. Yes. <laughs> it's a very interesting feeling to see that pop up. You're like, wow. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. So if I'm doing something's happening, something's working. So yeah. 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 It's interesting. Um, specific to podcasts, NPR uh, in the States, National Public Radio, yeah. had a, this is a, a little while ago, but I'll bet you could still search in their archives. They did a three part series on will AI replace podcasters? And oh. uh, because now they have the voice recognition thing too, right? Yes. And it was fascinating because I think, I don't know if it was the second or third episode in the series was totally AI, but it was really like you knew something was off. You know, it just was like, oh, really? But it was just fascinating the way they talk about it and, you know, um, the possibilities. A little a little scary, you know. But then when you actually heard the episode that AI put together and, and used their voices and everything, you're like, nah, I don't think this is, we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not there yet, yeah. yeah. Uh, Google has Notebook LM came out recently. Mm -hmm. And it'll take any document and turn it into a podcast. Wow. Where there's two voices, a man and a woman, who talk to each other about the thing that they're reviewing. It's basically a way to summarize a bunch of data. Wow. And they come back to you in a structured beginning, middle, end of a podcast. And it's two AI voices having a conversation. They even cut each other off. They stumble. They they, I, they take breaths. They're like, <gasps> And they go into their next thing. Breaths that we would cut out as a podcast editor, right. they're in there. And I listened to it, and the female co-host actually made a mistake and corrected herself mid-sentence, just like a human. And I'm like, what is going on here? Okay, that's yeah, a little creepy. <laughs> that is very creepy. So Notebook LM, it's called. I am. It's by Google. Mm -hmm. It's by Google. Um, you, Yeah, you can give it any document you want. You can send it to a website, and it'll review your website for you, and it'll come back and make an episode, basically an episode, an audio commentary on whatever you want it to commentate and make comments on. And it's a man and a woman, and they they just sound like two podcasters. Wow. And it's very interesting. Yeah. So the, some more homework for you. Yes, you got it. I got my assignments. They're building up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, you have a new podcast coming out here in the future, not AI voice, your voice. Right, me. It's just talk, me. Talk about your new show. What's coming down the road? Uh, Silver Women, Bright Future. It's specifically for uh, women, uh, probably 50 and over, who have uh, who are facing, you know, life transitions. And uh, what prompted it for me was uh, my divorce a few years ago and the uh, – because I hadn't – been working or employed. I had been working, but I hadn't been employed yeah. uh, for years. And I realized, you know, I was going to have to support myself and kind of threw me for a big loop uh, emotionally, mm. financially, psychologically, all those leads. And, uh, but I, I realized because of my age, like at, at the time I was almost 60 and I, not to sound morbid, but you know, you, you, you kind of get faced with your mortality. Like how many years do I have left? You know? Right. And so I decided I wasn't going to be a victim and 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 put in a lot of work and stuff and, and talked to people, had counseling, all the stuff to pull myself out of it. And then realized over the process of doing that, that there were a lot of women in my situation who weren't doing that and who were um, hurting and maybe bitter and stuck. So the podcast stemmed from just sharing some of the things from that I did to move forward and even even though the podcast is it, I, I had started it it kind of went through spurts and starts which happens to us in life right anyway right uh yeah. and in the process of doing that i'm relaunching it this month and in the process started writing a book about it too to uh really just encourage and inspire women that this can be a good part of their you know time and season in their lives 
Amazing. So, yeah, self a bright future because we don't always feel like we have a bright future when things like that. I like the name. The name is great for that show. Mm, thank you. You know exactly what you're getting from that. I like that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, before we jump off, um, Pat, let's talk about naming your podcast for a second. What, what, from your perspective, again, new person coming in, they don't know what to call their podcast. Any tips on what, how to structure a good name for your podcast? Yeah, I would say uh, think think of the little picture. And what I mean by that is when oh. people are on their phone, which is where most people yeah. listen to podcasts from their phone, yeah. um, imagine what the little square is going to look like that has your show on it. And you yeah. don't want a lot of words, so you, you want it to be very clear. And I say stay yeah. away from cute. I mean, there's so many cute names but we don't know what the show's about, you know. Yeah. So be very clear about uh, what you are. And, and don't worry about, be, you, you can be cute in your description. You can be cute and use phrases in your trailer. Um, but in the show name, I think you, just be clear. What are you doing and who is it for? You know, right. so, you know, tips for women, the, uh, strategies for women in, uh, in, in midlife. Like you could yeah. put that as a name in your and and put it on your artwork, but then you can be creative in the description and, and who you are and what. And don't waste time with putting your name on it because nobody knows you right away, right? So that's just real estate you're burning up. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that, the one thing I hear people talk about here in Canada, we say niche. I know a lot of my American friends say niche, but that whole idea about narrowing your focus about who you're talking to. Again, I go back to Dad Space, my podcast for Dads by Dads. 67% of my audience are female for my Dad Space podcast. Wow. The majority of my audience are female. So, like, I still focus on dads. Yes. I'm still talking, to directing my content towards dads. That doesn't mean that no one else is allowed to listen to your show. That's right. So don't worry about focusing on one group and one target audience. Everyone's welcome to listen. And if they come and find value... That makes me happy, beyond happy, that that the women that listen to the show are finding value in that show yeah. for whatever reason. Maybe they're a single mom or maybe they're handing the phone to their partner that, saying, here, that listen could be. to this. Yeah. Something. Yeah. It could be anything, right. right? But that they're finding value. That's that's the biggest thing. I love that. Yeah. So don't worry about the potential to exclude somebody from your content by narrowly focusing your attention on one certain group of people. Everyone's welcome, but just focus on them. Yeah. yeah. To your point, though, I would say like, so you you know, yes, anybody can listen, but you're still, you still know who you're talking to. Right. You're, yeah. You're talking to dads. Now, yeah, moms can listen. Anybody can listen. Kids can listen. Right. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Um, but you, but you're still, you're still focusing because, you know, when we, when I first started blogging way back in the stone age. Like I, I, I wanted to reach everybody. Like I, I wanted to have a place where everybody could be welcome. Well, you end up having nobody feel welcome, you know, because right. there's just too much. It's all over the place, and especially yeah. with podcasts, people are listen often listening with earbuds. You are literally in their head, so mm -hmm. you want them to feel like to feel welcome, like you are talking to them specifically. Um. And so it is, I think it is important to know who you're talking to. Then don't worry about if other people are listening, that's fine. But just, you know, be able to focus your message. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a great spot. That's a good spot to end off to. The one thing I noticed on your website, you do have um, some things for us that we can download. You have some things for us to, to be in touch with you as well. And your services are listed, all that great stuff mm -hmm. on your website. Can you take us through your site before we jump off? Pat? Uh yeah, I don't have it open, but I'll try to walk. Yeah, through. I have it up here as we're chatting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do podcast production services. Part of that, uh, you know, that's it's business owners because it is. I, I, my approach is that a podcast is also a marketing tool and Good. a uh, a way to serve your cust your current customers or clients. So, you know, primarily p businesses that have some kind of marketing budget is is who that's who I work with, but. Uh, but I do want to feel like I would align with your mission. So I kind of am spoiled because I 
I like to know who I'm working with. So that's why we walk you through a pod chat. We get, we meet and everything before we work together. Um, but all my services are pretty uh, flexible. So the reason we talk first is because I feel that I have to know what, what are you looking for? What are you interested in? You know, what part of the process are you stuck on or need help with? Um, but I do have a, I call it from the mic to the masses and it's a, which I can, I can give you the link for that and, and, Sure. Listeners can do it. And it kind of outlines the process, the the 30,000 30, foot view of how to get a message, how to get a, a podcast out from concept to actual production. And uh, it's just one page graphic. So you can, you know, see it all there. Uh, sure. The other thing that I offer that I love, well, I have two other services that we talked about the capsule podcast, which I love doing for people who might be interested, but they don't want to take the, the dive yet. And so it's usually four to eight episodes. Uh, we can be flexible and you can use it in a variety of ways. That's that's also on there. And then I don't think yeah. this is on my website yet, but I do. I have started to offer a guest services, uh, guest ser- uh, helping you be a guest. So you don't even have to have your own podcast, but you can appear as as a guest on other podcasts related to your industry, related to your niche, niche, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and find clients that way. And also just to serve people. My, my, my uh, clients are very service oriented. Uh, their primary, their primary uh, mission is to help people. And then their secondary issue uh, mission, of course, is to build their business, but they're really very generous hearted people and i just enjoy working with them excellent well keep me in mind i'm always looking for guests i only have eight shows so i'm sure i might have some spot for some of your people to come and work with i would love to have anybody from your group come through that'd be great eight show. i think we can perk something out <laughs> <laughs> i see one other thing on your website it says a spotlight day what's a spotlight day a uh, spotlight day. Yeah, it's actually spotlight days. It's actually two days. But uh, okay. if you have a specific thing you, you want to work on, like if you're trying to focus on who is your niche, you know, who are you speaking to? Yeah. Or uh, if you have, if you want to come up with, you want to brainstorm topics ahead of time, you know, it, it depends on whatever you, you, there's, there's some activity that you're really stuck on and you need time with. You can book a day with me. And it usually, the reason it's two days is usually we'll, we'll meet, of course, figure out what the, what the uh, assignment is that we need to work on, spend a few hours, you get an assignment, you get homework to do, uh, depending on what your yes, because <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> and I always tell my clients, I can't want success for you. I can't want this for you yeah. more than you want it. You have to want it. So, um, and then we end, you know, we end up with an assignment and then we meet again to follow up, develop, see what next steps are or whatever. And uh, it's, it's just me and you, it's one-on-one. And uh, I love I love doing it. So I, I, I that is a limited uh, limited availability though because I just am focusing on one person. Yeah, excellent. I love that you offer that. That's a great. I don't hear that very often. That's really great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Excellent. So I have links for Pat's website in the show notes as always. Okay. Pat, close us off with your best podcast tip that we can put into place today as we're recording our next episode. How can we motivate the podcasters listening? You're the one to wrap up the episode. What are we going to do? Big, a lot of weight on my shoulders. Well, I'd have to say it's a little piece of tough love. And uh, your podcast is not about you it's mm. or the people that you're listening, that, that who are listening. And so if you're whatever you're stuck on, put your put your mind, put yourself in their shoes. What do they need? What would help them? What do they want to hear? And uh, okay. nine times out of 10, that that helps at least move the needle a little bit. Excellent. Pat, thank you so much for coming on as my guest co-host. It's great talking to you. Uh, I'm going to have you back on for other stuff in the in the future as well. Um, but thank you for making time to come and share your wisdom with us. I really love having you here. And thank you for all that you do for podcasters. It's, uh, it's great to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. It's been so much fun. I love talking with you. So anytime. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Everybody, all the information as always in the show notes. Go check out Pat's website and reach out. Let her know you heard her on the show and she's got great services to offer to you. We'd love for you to go check out all the great things she does. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being here on the How to Podcast series. Glad to have you on the show with us listening in. I hope they're finding value in the podcast. I hope you're finding something that helps you with your show. 
helps you with the tools and the information from these amazing guest co-hosts through our daily Daves and these solo episodes. The variety of what we're doing here on the podcast is all designed for you so that you can get the tools you need to create your podcast and keep going with your show. That's why we're here. That's why I'm doing this. And I'm glad you're here finding value in this. If you would like to do a little bit more than just be a listener, if you want to do community with podcasters, we have a thing called our meetup on meetup.com. You can come find us and there'll be a link on our website at howtopodcast.ca and you can come and join in on our meetup. Instead of just being a, a listener, you could actually participate and come in and join other podcasters, just like you, at your stage, at your level, where you're at right now. And then other podcasters who are maybe a little further down the road who can learn from you and you can learn from them. And we host these meetups on a regular basis. Again, go to howtopodcast.ca and you'll find all the information there. We'd love for you to come join us at our next meetup. The only thing we need at our next meetup is you. You're the only thing missing from all of this. So consider joining our meetups. Again, they're totally free on a regular basis all through howtopodcast.ca. And I'd love to hear more from you about your podcast as well. There's a speak pipe link on howtopodcast.ca. Leave a message. I'd love to hear about you and your show and how we can work together to get your message into the world. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing the show with another podcaster that you're like, hey, I think you'd really like this episode. Go ahead, share the episode. And let's get more podcasters on the mic. Thanks for listening.